Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. My name is Amélie Safré, Assistant Cultural Programming Officer, and it's a pleasure to introduce this lecture, organized in connection with the exhibition From Africa to the Americas, Picasso Face to Face, Past and Present. This exhibition invites visitors to reflect on the issues of the colonial gaze and perceptions of identity, aesthetics, and culture. Tonight, we are delighted to have with us Shelley Ruth Butler. Dr. Shelley Ruth Butler teaches, researches, consults, and writes about museums and heritage sites with a focus on Canada and South Africa. She's inspired by exhibitions and interventions shaped by social justice, multiple perspectives, and individual and social well-being. She is co-editor of Curatorial Dreams, Critics, Imagine Exhibitions in 2016, and author of the widely taught museum ethnography, Contested Representations, Revisiting into the Heart of Africa in 2011. She offers curatorial dreaming workshops to museum professionals, researchers, students, and community groups. As a self-described disruption agent, she has been consulted to increase the inclusivity in the uh, Picasso exhibit. So um, I'm going to speak um, to you for about 10 minutes, first of all. And I want to start with um, the issue of um, difficult histories and what what we might mean when we talk about, you know, museums presenting difficult histories and difficult knowledge, especially in relation to this Picasso exhibition. And um, at the most kind of obvious level, what we're talking about, I think, is um, a way of narrating art history, a way of talking about contemporary art. So this is not just a story of the history of art, it's also really fundamentally a story about colonial collecting. And once we're talking about colonial collecting, well, colonial collecting is just the tip of the iceberg, it's just one small part of a larger project of colonialism. Picasso owned about 110 objects, mostly from African colonies. About a quarter of them were masks, so you could say he had a bias toward a particular aesthetic that appealed and resonated with his, with his program, if you like. Um, 96 of the artifacts came from French colonies in Africa, and so we, can, we know that these would have been um, either, either stolen, purchased, or traded, but when I say pr purchased even, purchased in really unfavorable and unequal conditions, purchased in the, condition, in the context of, coloni of colonialism. Um, and Picasso himself never traveled, uh, or at, this, at least in the early 1900s, never traveled to Africa. Where was he encountering these objects? At the Trocadero Museum, the Ethnographic Museum in Paris, um, in the studios of colleagues, and um, um, with dealers. So, you know, colonial collecting links to colonialism. And when we talk about colonialism, the point I want to hold on to is that it always has two aspects to it. It is not only political overrule, political domination, but also symbolic domination. And it's a phrase that I get from the anthropologist John Komaroff. In thinking about Picasso, Picasso Primitif, this exhibition was completely different than um, what, be, what what it became in Kansas, and then what it has become here. Um, this exhibition was very much an um, archival project of really documenting very carefully the pieces that Picasso lived with and how he lived and worked with them in his studio and so on, where they were supposedly, as he, as he famously put it, witnesses to his creation. He was very good at creating his own genius. So the exhibit evolved, and um, at the Nelson Atkins in Kansas, it, um, you can see that it's now become through the eyes of Picasso. So quite explicitly an exhibition about Picasso, uh, a, a decision they made based on what they felt was the need of their local population. The museum serves the city and the region. But I must um, say that nevertheless, you know, they definitely started developing this, you can see in their publicity, this notion of 
of dialogue. And one of the things that they did exceptionally well in that exhibit was um, use some labels to create what they called gallery connections, where they would um, label something in the Picasso exhibition and say, if you're interested in this, uh, this piece of art, you can see similar work in our African gallery. And they have an excellent African gallery. And then in its development here, it was fun for all of us because it was in constant movement. Um, very challenging for the guides, for instance, to, to prepare for an exhibit that did not yet exist. At one point, it was called Face to Face, From Yesterday to Today, Non-Western Art and Picasso. Clearly, um, what that signals to me is already an intent to go much larger than the story of Picasso. Um, and it, then it became plural, which I only have in French, but face à face. Um, again, trying to create more layers. And finally, it becomes um, from Africa to the Americas, Picasso, face to face, past and present. And really what is most, I think, important and striking at this moment is the presence of contemporary art, African art.